Well, good good morning, everybody. So SDF at eight o'clock this morning, which is backward for them to do a patch that late at night because this is nine p.m. Korea time. They started a patch late their time, early morning our time. It's it's now concluded, which is cool, I guess. But they they did a another large hot fix. Fix the bug with centipede poison, doing abnormal damage. So sometimes if you stood in the centipede poison, it would bug and it would do like absurd damage regardless of whether you were like a cleric with damage reduction stuff or not. Spider mommies would get stuck in their spider uh, spider pot so this was nice but uh they've then fixed it goblin cave certain static exits would never open portals would appear inside the ground was that one was fun fix the bug with smoke pot effect that thing was bugged as hell several bugs with hydra and its projectile i'm hoping the hydra issue had to do with when it actually acquired its target there was a severe delay when you cast hydra before it like acquired a target it used to fire four times before it died and then it went to three and the projectiles would like go through the ground and stuff it was weird uh several sound bugs where the sound would not disappear uh normal yeah, so we would have we would have things still making noise after they died. Uh, normalized sound volumes for sounds that were too loud. Performance optimizations, uh, throwable torches hitting an object. Primary stats for Brave Hunter Pants, Strength Agility to Dex Agility. True physical damage gained for higher grade frost amulets updated. I, I don't know what this means. I guess we'll have to look. Maybe this means that they're upping the true physical damage. I really fucking hope not, though, because we don't need any more physical damage on physical damage dealing classes. Interact speed and installation speed now uses agility instead of dex. Equip speed now based on dex instead of agility. That's good. An 8 magic resistance rating curve based on your will attribute. So we'll have to see what that does. Magical interaction speed and magical installation speed now will be based on will instead of knowledge. Well, this is interesting too, because magical interaction speed was always based on spell haste, and now it's going to be based on how much will you have. Huh. Interesting. I mean, most most classes that end up stacking knowledge can uh, tend to stack will anyway, unless I guess you're a bard. So that's that's interesting. Bard's interaction speed is high regardless, so I don't know. New demon armor perk added for the warlock. Not that I'm taking credit for this, but I asked for this. <laughs> Stupid streamer suggestions being what they are. Terry asked me about the warlock because I've been bitching about warlock and their survivability forever. And, and I suggested like a perk that allowed from like another 10% PDR. But this is interesting. The perk allows warlocks to wear plate and chain armor, but must sacrifice a lot large amount of their magic heal. So this is interesting because the the availability for them to gain some frontline fighting capability is kind of huge and high PDR warlock might actually be really fun. Uh, updated primary stats for golden crafted items. So big question with golden crafted items. Uh, all of all of the stat changes that got made for all the armor that people were wearing, the stat changes that got made for like found in raid or like found armor made um, but not crafted armor. The golden armor didn't get like the big stat buffs that you were seeing across the board for everything. So now that they've changed this, uh, golden items will probably be in a shit ton of lobbies again. Updated the amount of magic resist gain per rarity for dark plate, dark leather, dashing boots uh and runestone gloves i'm guessing this is more magic resist updated the amount of projectile damage reduction gained uh per rarity for fine cuirass uh heavy gauntlets play boots etc 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 okay so anti anti ranger i'm guessing updated means increased i hope it means increased bardi should attack multiplier for each hitbox has been changed from 160 to 170 so they've they've increased the sour spot hit for uh, a whole bunch of stuff which is good um because we kind of needed it stuff like flange and morning star have such a small sweet spot for their their hits that not hitting it felt really shitty so i'm glad that they're giving like a little bit of love to like flange mace and uh and morning star attack multiplier for spear spear almost never hits sour so that's kind of weird but whatever recovery from surgical kits is now treated as physical healing this is good too surgical kit physical heal is that a, is that like an actual amount i guess if you're a barb it, it would matter uh howling crypts has now been removed from the map rotation has been replaced with another instance of ruins so now instead of doing the howling crypts run it's going to be two instances of ruins because of like the 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 three map run so this I mean, I'm I'm fine with this actually. That, that's a that's a pretty big change, but I'm actually kind of fine with this because the most AP that you would get if you're running HR in a in a single time frame is the the ruins to Howling Crypts to Inferno like loop. So this this actually if for people that are trying to like grind their way to demigod and stuff, um, this is actually more beneficial for people over time than uh, than to have the the crypts as part of the rotation. Uh, I think that's fine. Uh, several performance optimizations for Goblin. Uh, monster density reduction for goblin so this is good um this helps people traverse the the dungeon quicker um people are still chasing the circle like crazy Update the overall health of the cyclops i wonder if that means that cyclops got nerfed a little bit on his health pool um we'll have to see healing from lich curse is now treated as system healing so the lich curse is if you die i assume improve the drop rate of troll pelt so nice improve the drop rate for mimics 
Drop rate for items from breaking barrels. But not wolf belts? No wolf belts, bro? No no centaur hooves? Come on, man. Return to spectator mode for high roller dungeons. Player will be able to spectate other players for up to one minute after the party's been eliminated from HR. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm okay with this. Temporary spectate for the sake of just their own sanity. You know, you want to see somebody get clapped when you had a close fight or see if they lived or something. Like, I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, this actually would help with the report system, too, because if you're able to spectate people that killed you and you think that they might be doing some fucky shit, uh, it's a way for you to be able to see them and then do the reporting. So I think that that's fine. New larger Goblin Cave maps suffer from performance issues. Hotfix rolls out performance optimizations. Modified version of the spectator system. Work on improving these features while maintaining a clean environment. I'd still like to see them up the Centaur hoof drop rate. Like, stuff that you need for, like, quests... You know, the, those those items that are like almost never dropping like wolf pelts and stuff. You need 15 wolf pelts at a 2 or 3% drop rate. Like that kind of sucks. That's pretty grindy. The centaur hoof is a 1% drop rate. You know, st stuff like that I'd like to see them fix. You know, a single 1, one to 2% drop rate for spider silk. Like those kinds of things are things that um, when they drop, it feels really special, you know? But of course, then you have to like live and get out with them. So if you're getting beat while you're finding those rare items... It, it kind of sucks. I'd like to even like 5% would probably still feel grindy, but not feel like it's uh, it's a futile effort, you know, to try and get that shit without, uh, without spending like literal days trying to find like a single drop, you know. Pretty cool. I'm down with uh, with these changes, and I, I like think that the uh, the plate warlock will be pretty damn fun. Emergency hotfix will be released soon. Do not enter the barracks module in the howling crypt. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. People have fallen through the map. I feel like if you enter the barracks module maybe there's no floor maybe you fall through the map so demon armor incoming magical healing uh gain the ability to equip plate armor lose incoming magical healing by 75 percent. so i guess that would affect cleric heals so you're you have incoming magical healing reduction of 75 percent. so let's uh let's let's see what that or how that kind of plays we'll just do yeah so like everything opens up so we'll just do um like some basic shit i guess okay uh first test Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's huge difference. That's a huge difference. So all, it's all healing. All incoming magical healing. You'd have to go physical heal. I wonder if that affects the potions too. Oh, yeah. Potions. Okay, so potions are also considered magic healing, right? So, this is not 15 health over 30 seconds. This is 3 health, 5 health, whatever. It's way, way less. Yeah, like, you're you're doing it, you're running a net negative. Bandages are physical, though. So, this should heal for the full amount. Yeah, okay. And surgical kits are physical. Yeah, it's not, it's not the plus heal, it's the damage. So, let's see, it costs... Hold on, it's 14 HP. What do I get back? <laughs> I get back 10. All right, we'll, uh, we'll put vampirism on. I guess I could, I could go to HR and just put on better shit. That's break even. All right, so base magic power bonus, uh, ish, because this is a 5.7% magic staff. So I think base power bonus blue staff, you break even on the cast cost. After that, you would net a slight amount of HP based on the damage scaling. So you need you need naked blue staff. It would do it. Yeah, right there. I gained I gained three HP. So instead of healing back to what it cost me, I net three health on what I've got. So plus plus two true and another twenty percent magic power bonus it gives me three health. So all right. Moral of the story though is unless you have a lot of damage gear in order to make the life drain make sense, because I'm running vampirism too. So it's vampirism with blue staff. So unless um, you're running like a bunch of plus damage shit, the self heal stuff is not worth it. Cause I think I think in order for this to really net out anything, cause it's four points. You're you're talking a four to one, right? It's it's four points of damage for every one point of healing on life drain. So cause I have plus I have plus two true, so it's three point two four. All right. So if it was purple staff, so that'd be five, which is half a ten. Plus 1.5, that's 6.5, times 1.2, well, if it was 60%, we'll say it's 30%, right? So that's 8.45, plus half of the 11, so that'd be 5.5, times 0.45, 6, 6 damage per second. So that'd be 6, 6 
health healed per tick, right? And it's five ticks, so that's 30 HP on 14. So you're getting back double what the cast cost of Hydra would be, like Hydra Life Drain, if you could get the full restoration. But even still, like... Hydro Life Drain standing still for like eight seconds would give you 30% of your health back with like, f like purple, that's purple staff, purple staff plus 11 damage on your gear. That's like, that's like full, full damage, full magical damage build out with a purple staff and 60% uh, magic power bonus. But it's, it's not 0.75, it's 0.55 because of vampirism. It counteracts it a little bit. So it's only, you get 45% of your healing, not 25%. I think I think 75% is a little bit too much. The problem is the sustain like I said the pro the problem is the sustainability. Like you can get you can get a lot of damage mitigation on that build for sure. Like you could you could do like, you know, 40 to 50% PDR. You could easily hit 60 to 70% magic resist with all the magic resist gear options that you have plus uh, like uh like anti magic, right? You wouldn't even need the shield, the bubble. You could easily hit those. That, that's not the issue. The issue is what you do when you get hurt. Because, like, you know, mid-combat, you're not going to be able to suck down bandages. Like, when you're done, I mean, I guess you could run around with, like, five stacks of green bandages and a couple of campfires or something, you know? But then, in, in which case, you're really just a fighter with, like, magic stuff that you can do, you know? Stack decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah decks and bandies. Yeah. I guess plus, plus physical healing. I guess if you went plus physical healing with uh, with bandages or something on your gear, you know, you could net a little bit out of that, maybe. Or like or like do a little bit of vigor stacking and sit, but you're really only getting recoverable health then. You, like, I still think you need enough to be able to net positive on the cast for life drain. Because it's got to be a life drain thing. That's the, only, that's the only thing that makes any damn sense. It has to be a life drain thing. Like, running like a curse warlock with torture mastery doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Um, on, a, on a plate build with that much reduced healing, like, you'll never see it. And, and the healing is done in tenths. So, like, they, you could, you will definitely get less than one HP per tick. Wizard high damage, warlock front lines enough, could take chain lightning. Yeah, so, I mean, like, there's, there definitely is that. Like, if you could, if you could build a warlock in a way where they had good damage mitigation and you could just kind of, like, double you key at people <laughs> with all that magic resist, uh, you could kind of laugh off a caster for sure. Like, a wizard would be nothing. You'd be able to just face tank magic missiles and it wouldn't even bother you. There's definitely something there for it. I just think that the self, I, I think that the magic heal penalty is too high.